<sighs> so, I was just watching True Detective. I need a nap. <laughs> Okay, so last week, uh, Gonkus RC wrote, uh, Jonathan, are you going to review more episodes of True Detective Season 2? And the reason I haven't done follow-ups is because I usually don't follow TV shows uh, that closely. I might do like a premiere or a finale or, or something along the way if it's like actually really exciting, but typically no. And uh, I considered doing this season, but then I watched episode 2, and I watched episode 3, and I just finished watching episode 4, and it's been very slow going. The, the, the problem mostly with it is that uh, you, you just don't care. You don't care that uh, you know Vince Vaughn is trying to have a baby or not trying to have a baby with you know the redhead who is pressuring him and he's trying to get back into being a bad guy. And it's like I'm trying not to picture him from Wedding Crashers being the funny guy. And he doesn't really, I don't take him seriously as, as a dramatic actor. Much like the people that he's trying to get money from, I don't take him seriously. And it's like, uh, and I don't care about, uh, you know, Rachel McAdams and, you know, her sister who works in an online uh, video thing with the hookers. And it's like, okay, and, and the worst, by far, is Taylor, Taylor Kitsch, who has this really trite, cliche storyline of a, a gay guy who's trying to prove to himself, or at least rationalize to himself, that he's not gay. He's, he's, he's having a baby, and he's getting married, despite the fact that he's gay, because he's trying to prove something to what I imagine would be his mother and father, or something. And that's not going to play out well. I mean, that's kind of obvious, right? So, and here's the deal. Season 1 did something very similar. They had some very simple uh, plot elements that were very, um, just unoriginal. You know, the fact that Cole's uh, daughter had died um, in a car accident and he was dealing with that. That's, something, that's nothing new. The fact that Marty was having an affair and, you know, he had marital issues. That, that also was nothing new, but what made this such a good season in season one is that the characters brought something to it and the writing brought something to it you know that the actors were good enough they raised their a-games and you respected these two now and on top of that the writing was so good what what I miss most about season one were like the monologues from Rustin Cole in the uh, you know interrogation room where he would just go on like these like Nietzsche rants and they, some of them were kind of like hit and miss more miss and hit but every once in a while it'd be really interesting about his point of view. I mean, yeah, he is a he is a cynical bastard, but he was still intriguing as hell. As, a, as hell. Uh, this, I, I can't get into it. I think my biggest problem with this season so far is that, um, you know, in season one, they kind of moved things along from clue one to clue two to clue three, and it just, you just kept following the, the, the breadcrumbs to get to the next part. This feels so long because you have four characters who are not together at all. Not, well, well okay, maybe there's, occasionally they are, but for the most part, we keep flashing between Taylor Kitsch, Vince Vaughn, Colin Farrell, Rachel McAdams. And we get a little bit further in each storyline, and then we jump. And then we have to sit through three other storylines before we get any progress on the first one. And it does get tiresome because you don't make a lot of progress in each episode. This episode felt a lot like the earlier episodes, uh, episode 2 and 3. Um, very little development. You know, Vince Vaughn is still going around trying to get people to take him seriously, and he's trying to get some type of money going uh, because he lost it. Uh, Colin Farrell has ha probably had the most uh, character development because he's no longer drinking and he's trying to do something a little bit more to get things in the right direction. Uh, Rachel McAdams is still like this one-dimensional, you know, tough-as-nails... <laughs> uh, tough as nails cop uh, and it's like okay and she's like she's trying to overcompensate and it's so obvious and you know it, I much rather would have seen um, Charlize Theron take on the role I think she would have been more appropriate for the part she would have actually delivered this this tough girl attitude where I feel like she kind of falls flat and uh, oh yeah the case we haven't made any much progress. I mean, yeah, they found the guy at the, the, the watch at the, at the pawn shop, and that led them to the other guy, 
and I guess there was like a meth lab and it blew up and it kind of looked just like the same from Breaking Bad and then there was a shootout in the street and that was kind of cool but even that kind of felt like somebody was like listen we have to follow the playbook of season one and if you remember in season one that was a big shootout that six minute uh, you know shot that followed them around for six and a half minutes where Matthew McConaughey was grabbing Ginger and dragging him through the woods and that was like one of the best scenes in the whole season and they were like hey listen we're at the halfway mark with uh, episode four and we need to do the same exact thing we needed to have a big action scene because you know we did all the dialogue and the driving in the cars and whatnot but now we need to have action and they did it and it was okay it was like but it wasn't great it felt very mediocre I feel like I've seen it a million times I feel like it was a scene from SWAT <laughs> You know, the, the, the movie SWAT with Colin Farrell, and I was just like, ugh. Um, anyway, I just, I, I, that, that's, that's, my, that's my piece on it. In the first season, it's like, if you have Netflix or if you have uh, On Demand, you're like, let's watch one more episode, right? This one, thank God, it's, it's week to week, because if I had to watch this in bulk, ugh, I, I would have fallen asleep. But, you know, the case, you know, the case to find Casper's killer, which, again, not very compelling, because... Who the hell is Casper? He's a, a, an old guy who got his eyes torn out and he had dealings with Vince Vaughn who's kind of a loser and it's like, well, why do I care? In season one, it was like you had like this this innocent, naive 18-year-old girl, you know, who was looking to find Jesus and she found a cult instead and you felt like, okay, they should find these bastards. This one, it's like, he's just a guy that probably pissed somebody off. And not for nothing, I, I guarantee you that redheaded. Uh, the wife of Vince Vaughn, I feel like either her or him are behind this. Like, you know, maybe he's just fronting this whole thing like, you know, oh yeah, I'm in such dire straits, but maybe he, maybe he pocketed his own money. Maybe he's planning to leave. I don't know. Something about him ain't right. Um, I feel like he's definitely hiding a secret in some capacity. But Taylor Kitsch is probably the one who may be behind it. I mean, he's waking up, you know, and not remembering how he ended up in the, the other guy's apartment. And he had like a relapse with his gayness. That storyline is so weak. I really hate the storyline of like the guy who's trying to battle his gayness because he feels obligated to, and he, he's he's getting married to a woman that he accidentally knocked up, and now he's forcing the person that he's not because he for the person that he wants to be, and it's like. We've seen this story, and it wasn't it wasn't intriguing the first time around, and this is just a boring rehash, and I just don't care. So, um, <laughs> sorry this isn't the most positive uh, review, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, if I had to give this a letter for the, the first four episodes, I'd probably give it a uh, C+. Plus. M my suggestions moving forward is that when they do it again, don't do four actors, and don't bring back Taylor Kitsch. <laughs> I mean, I like the idea of just having two actors, two detectives in a car driving side by side, and, you know, they're a little bit different because, like, like Marty says in season one, you don't pick your family, you don't pick your partner. And this is the same thing. Like, that's what I liked about season one. You know, you take two very different type of cops, you put them in a car together, you make them work together, and that's great. You know, this is like... Ugh. Anyway, let me know what you think. Um, I'm trying to keep all the pieces of the puzzle in my head. Um, if you guys have any theories about where you think the season might be going, as far as uh, who may have killed Casper, or who was involved, or who, who killed Stan, who killed Vince Vaughn's right-hand man, um, honestly, I'm not interested enough to try to think about it. It's like, I don't care. None of these characters are really that empathetic, except for Colin Farrell, who is starting to grow on me. But the other guy, like Vince Vaughn, Richard McAdams, and, and especially Taylor Kitsch, I couldn't care any less, so... Yeah, so if you have any comments or theories about what you think, please to be sure to sound off in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching because you just got burned.